there can be no fear in faith. As you have heard me say before, if you allow it to happen, fear, it will paralyze you. It will keep you from moving forward in your faith. Therefore, it will keep you from your blessings. So we who are of sincere faith in the Lord, we must, yes, always trust in him, but we must also have the courage. We must have the courage to always move forward, trusting again that all things work together for good for all of us, for all of those who love the Lord in all of our afflictions and all of our troubles, our trials and our tribulations. Again, we can't sit down. We must have the courage to move forward. And so that's something that we're going to be taking a look at here in our Sunday school lesson this week and in our Sunday school lesson next week. As for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be taking a look at the story of Esther. Now, for all of you who may be wondering, who is Esther? Well, we'll see here today in the second chapter of Esther and the seventh verse, we'll see that Esther, her true name was actually Hadassah. That was her Hebrew name, like Daniel, whose name, whose true name was Belteshazzar, under the, the captivity of the Babylonians, they would have their names changed. And so Hadassah had her name changed to Esther. And so we'll also see there in that scripture as well, there in the second chapter in the seventh verse of Esther, that she was the first cousin of a man named Mordecai, who also raised her as his own daughter. She had no parents, we're told there in scripture. It is very likely that her parents they may have been they may have been killed when the Babylonians conquered uh, Jerusalem when they conquered the southern kingdom the land of Judea if they weren't if they weren't killed then it is also possible that they may have died during the captivity to the Babylonians as well we'll see there in the sixth verse so scripture it shows us that Esther that she would eventually become the queen she would become the queen in Babylon We'll see there in the first verse, uh, the first chapter of Esther, that the king at that time was named Ahasuerus, better known as Xerxes. And he was one who actually served as the king of Persia. You see, the Persians, they had conquered the Babylonians. It was actually under the Persian rule where the Jews who were living in Babylon, where they began to be freed from that captivity in Babylon. In fact, by this point in time in scripture, one group of the Jews had already turned, returned back to, to Jerusalem, as you find in the book of Ezra. And then you can see the later returns in both Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah as well. But his former queen, we're told there in the ninth verse of the first chapter of Esther, her name was Vashti. She was one who disobeyed him. She was very disobedient of him. And in her disobedience, a decree, we'll see that it was made where she was dethroned which led to there being a search for a new queen in Babylon. So over in the second chapter again of Esther and in the eighth verse, we'll see that there was a very wide search for a new queen in Babylon, for which Esther was actually part of that search, we'll see there. And so out of all of the women that was a part of the search for a new queen, the 17th verse there in the second chapter of Esther, it tells us that Esther was the one that the king loved the most. She found favor in, in his eyes, and so she would go on to become queen. So all of this background information about knowing the setting that this lesson is taking place in, knowing how Esther, how she became queen, it sets us up for the meat of our Sunday school lesson this week, and especially for our Sunday school lesson next week. Well, here our lesson this week, it takes place in the third chapter of Esther, where our lesson, it opens up there in the second verse, where we'll see that the servants of the king bowing to pay homage to a man named Haman as the king had instructed and commanded. However, we'll see there in that verse that Esther's cousin refused to bow. Mordecai refused to bow down to this man, refused to pay homage to this man. We'll see there in the first verse who Haman was and why it was that they had been commanded to bow and pay homage to him. There in the first verse, this man had been appointed to be over all the princes throughout the land by the king, and he was to be honored. So what Mordecai had did there, it was a sign of disrespect as he dishonored this man. He not only dishonored Haman, but he also dishonored 
the command of the king as well. And so again, taking a look at the second verse there, you'll see where the other servants, the servants of the king, they would come and they would be looking at Mordecai like he was a fool. And, and they was asking him there, why do you transgress? Why do you dishonor the king's command? And when word of this, we'll see there, when word of this reached Mordecai's ears about the disrespect, we'll see there in the fifth verse that, that Haman, he grew very angry. He grew very upset. And rather than laying hands on Mordecai, we'll see the, the anger and how evil this man Haman could be. Well, we'll see there that after being told who Mordecai's people were, Haman desired to destroy all of them because they were Mordecai's people. So let's be very clear about this here. Haman, he had moved to genocide all because one man didn't bow to him, because one man dishonored him, because one man didn't pay homage to him. Haman, he moves to destroy all of the Jews. And so this tells us something. This tells us a great deal about this man named Haman, right? Very wicked, very evil, right? To first off be moved to kill somebody just because they didn't bow down to you, just because they didn't pay homage to you. And then to not only kill that person, but to then want to wipe out all of the people of, of Mordecai, of his people, to wipe out all of the Jews. Genocide is evil. And so this man, he was evil, but at the same time, he's very small. He's, he's very pitiful. He's very pathetic as well to be so angered, to be so moved over one man not bowing, over one man not paying homage to him. He comes off as a very small and pathetic person here. So we'll see there in a verse, scripture that's outside of the selected scripture of our lesson today. We'll see there that Haman went to the king to have a decree made so that he could set forth in destroying the Jews. And there in the 11th verse, after giving him his signet, the king said to Haman, the money and the people, they are given to you to be able to do with them as seems good, as seems right to you. So the king here, who again is the husband of, of Esther here, the king here signs off on this genocide, signs off on the killing of all the Jews. This, again, this becomes a major plot point here in the story that we're taking a look at this week, but it especially will become a major plot point in our Sunday school lesson next week. As again, the king here is the husband of, of Esther. He is married to a, a Hebrew. He's married to a Jewish woman. Now, at this point, our lesson, uh, the selected scripture of our lesson this week, it jumps over into the fourth chapter of Esther, where we take a look there at the seventh verse. And in the seventh verse, we'll see that Mordecai, that he's speaking to a man about all that had happened and about the decree that had been made to destroy the Jews. And so we'll see there that Mordecai gave this man a copy of the decree to give to Esther, to give to his cousin. Mordecai, he's hoping to get his cousin to go and to plead to her husband, to go and to plead to the king on behalf of, of her people. So again, Mordecai, he's simply hoping for the queen, hoping for his cousin, hoping for Esther to move on, on not just his behalf, but on the behalf of, of all of her people. Would Esther do this? Now, we'll see there in the ninth and in the 10th verse that the man whose name had thought he was Esther's servant. He went back and he delivered Mordecai's message to, to Esther. And after hearing this message, she had a message that, that she desired to be, de be delivered to her cousin, that she desired to be delivered back to Mordecai. Now, let's pay very close attention here to the message that she is sending back to, to, to her cousin, to Mordecai here. Let's pay very close attention to Esther's initial response here, because we'll see here that her initial response, her immediate response was one that was of, of hesitance. She was hesitant to move. We'll see there in the 11 verse that she essentially said to her cousin that those who went before the king, before they were ordained to, before they were given the time to, they would be put to death. So Esther's immediate response, again, it wasn't one that was filled with boldness, right? She doesn't just get up and, and move, right? 
it is one where she is concerned, right? It is one that is of, of fear. She is fearful of, of losing her life. She goes into life preservation mode. She says, she gets this message and, and I imagine upon hearing about the decree, about the killing of her people, I don't imagine that Esther was like, okay, well, yeah, go ahead and let it happen. I don't imagine that she felt that way. I certainly believe that she was moved, but I believe that she desired to go about it in a proper manner. And so she wasn't going to take any chances. She wasn't going to take any risk. I, I feel like asking you in this moment, do you feel like you must take chances, that, that you must take risk when it comes to receiving your blessing? There are going to be difficult days. There are going to be difficult times that we face. And again, as I said at the start of this lesson here, faith, it requires us to have courage at times. We, we can't be so fearful that we sit still and that we don't move. There's nothing wrong with playing it safe. Don't get me wrong. But there are gonna be a lot of times where we must have the courage to move forward if we desire to, to get that blessing. Because again, the journey is not, on, go, not going to always be an easy one. It's not going to always be easy for you to get your blessing. And so, yes, there are gonna be times where you have to have courage to move forward in your faith. This is one of those moments in time where Esther, where she needed to move and she needed to be encouraged to move. And so something that we're going to see here is an encouraging word coming from Mordecai, coming from her cousin there. And so we'll see here in the 13th verse that Mordecai responded to his cousin. And, and he said to her, don't think in your heart you will escape in the king's palace any more than all other Jews. He said to her, relief and deliverance will come for the Jews from, from another place, but your father's house, it will perish. But again, I want you to notice there with Mordecai saying, look, if you don't move again, we are going to be delivered from this. Mordecai is saying that Mordecai is saying that from, from a place of faith, because again, Mordecai is trusting in the Lord. He's trusting in how God works. And so on that note, he raises the question there. He asked Esther there, who know whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So let's understand the point that, that, Mordecai is trying to convey that he's trying to express to his cousin here. First off, he's saying, look, God is going to save us. And again, he said that from faith, right? And then he points out here that you may be queen here in Babylon. You may be married to the king of Babylon for this very reason. And so again, Mordecai is pointing to God pointing to how the Lord works because Esther, she was ordained for this very reason. She was ordained. She was set in place here for this specific, for this very reason. That is how God moves in our life. There are a lot of times where we go through things in our life that, that we may not be able to understand. We may be in a place, in a point in our life that, that may not make sense in that very moment. But again, we must understand that God is at work. And there are a lot of times where the Lord has set us up to either receive a blessing or the Lord has set us up to be a blessing. And so again, we must trust in the way that the Lord works. Mordecai, we see clear to hear that Mordecai, he was trusting in the way that the Lord works. It's on Esther now. Mordecai is putting the shoe on her foot, giving her a word of encouragement. What would Esther, what would she do with it? And so we'll see there when we take a look at the 15th verse that those words that they reached the ears of Esther and she responded back to her cousin. And she said to Mordecai there in the 16th verse, gather all the Jews and fast. She said, fast for me. She, they were to fast for her. She said that she and her maids, that they would join in fasting as well. And so essentially there, Esther, was doing what, what many of us would do today when we are about to take on a task, when we are about to go through something. Esther was essentially asking for prayers. She was essentially saying, pray for me, and, and me and mine, we we're gonna pray for me as well. And so that's what we see Esther doing. Why was it that Esther was doing that? Why did she say, hey, fast for me, me and my maid servants, we we're gonna fast as well. 
We'll see there in the six, the 16th verse there that Esther said to her cousin, I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, she said, I perish. And so that was Esther accepting her fate, right? That was her accepting her calling. And that's something that a lot of pastors and preachers struggle with at first as well. Many people, they struggle with their calling, what they have been set to do, what they have been ordained to do. A lot of preachers, a lot of pastors you will hear, they will say that when, when they receive their calling from the Lord, we often like to say that we try to run from God. Many, many will tell you that they ran from the Lord for years. Many will tell you, maybe like me, when I tried to get ready to run from my calling, something had happened to where I had to take on my calling right then and right there. And so again, our lesson today, it is about courage. Again, we must have the courage to move in faith. Let us remember what Paul said. God has not given to us a spirit of fear, has he? No, the Lord has given us a spirit of power. And so we must move in that power. And again, in order for us to move in that power, we must believe, we must trust in the Lord, and again, we must have the courage. And so there are going to be times in your life where you may be hesitant to move. And in those times, I hope that you are surrounded by several Mordecais or that you have at least a Mordecai in your life that will encourage you to move by faith. And so again, I would also hope that you may be a Mordecai in somebody else's life. Because again, we all need each other in our life. We all need one another to uplift, to encourage, and to embolden. And that again is what Esther had in her life in her cousin. So again, I hope that's something that you take away from our lesson this week. Faith, it requires courage. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.